Reality Water Cooler. I am Sarah in Texas, and this is our place to chat all things Jeff Lewis and reality TV and my latest obsession, Beckham. Oh my goodness. I hope you're having an amazing day. Uh, mine started off very exciting. We had two toilets replaced. I know, adulting, don't be so jealous. Um, we've been in this house almost 18 years, and we have five toilets. And most have been replaced, but the two upstairs ones, you know, we just ignore because that's where the kids are, but we finally replaced them. So anyways, very exciting morning with my plumber, right? Um, anyways, let's get started. A couple things happened after we got off yesterday. Uh, Kim Zolciak's house went up for $6 million. So she bought, she and Coy bought this house supposedly, um, for $880,000 when it was being finished and they put the money in it to finish it. But if y'all have seen Tardy for the Party and you've seen the interior pictures of this house, it doesn't look like they've updated one single thing since. And also somebody, I forgot who it was, somebody posted a picture of like underneath a kitchen counter and there was all these scuff marks from either kids or the, the bar stools hitting it. I'm like, if you're selling a house for six million dollars, you've got to throw some touch up paint around it. Hire someone. I don't know that they have any money to do that. OK, but somebody had sent me shout out Jeff Lewis Sleuth. Somebody had sent me this H or this uh, home listing information before TMZ even broke the story. So when I saw the six million dollar price tag and that it has more bathrooms than it originally said, like, how does the number of bathrooms keep changing? That is so crazy to me. Anywho, um, but when I saw the six million, when just a couple of weeks ago, these fake people, fake listings, I guess, had put it up for sale by owner and it was 2.9 million and then 3 million. So how does it jump to $6 million? So this person lives in the area. She knows the area that Kim and Corey live in. And she said the land alone is worth that. Like it's a lot of land and it's in a really prestigious area. So I don't know. They seem to think it's worth $6 million. I guess the market is what the market is. And we'll see what it ends up selling for. Because I don't care if you say your house is worth $6 million, It's worth whatever it sells for at the time. So we'll just have to see how that pans out. Good luck to them, right? Can you imagine having a house on the market with four little kids? And then I'm assuming, I keep saying this and we don't know. If anyone knows this, let me know in comments. Do the two older girls, Ariana and Brielle, do they live at home with Kim and Corey and the other four? I don't know that, but I'm kind of thinking they do. I don't know. I don't follow them on Instagram though. Um, okay. Also, Britney Spears is back in the, the news. I guess, you know, this memoir is coming out that she keeps... Uh, promoting, which I'm happy for. She says she finally gets to tell her story. And Justin T Timberlake is not going to be happy because she tells a story about uh, them getting pregnant together, which the way I saw it worded was that he got me pregnant. It takes two people, unless it's a forced issue, which we're not even going to get into that. I don't like the term he got me pregnant. I'm assuming it was a mutual situation, consent. They got pregnant together and they agreed together to have an abortion because he wasn't ready to be a father. Obviously, he's married now with kids. She's going through a divorce with two kids. And, um, you know, it's just a whole different time. But I don't know. It, it, it is her story. It deserves to be told. I guess it makes sense that something so salacious because Justin Timberlake is so famous that that's the story that would come out of the memoir. I'm kind of curious what else is going to come out, though. Do you think? Are you going to read it? Are you going to read this memoir? I don't think I am. I love an autobiography. I love true crime. I love nonfiction in general. I just don't think I'll spend my time reading this one, though. I don't know. Let me know if you will. Um, also, I was listening to Andy Cohen this morning. Oh, my gosh, y'all. He's on fire. So we know he's not drinking. OK, he's on this sober journey until BravoCon. I think he'll start drinking at BravoCon. Uh, but he says it's really affecting him in different ways. So he wakes us up this morning and chooses violence because he sees a picture on Instagram of a mutual friend. And he apparently thinks the person, I think it's a guy, is getting too much filler. So he goes back and forth and tell me if you've ever done this.
Because I don't think I have. I was literally racking my brain going, have I ever told someone something? I don't know. So he messages the person and basically says, look, honey, I need to be the one to tell you that you were doing too much filler. Oh my God. John Hill was like, no, you can't say that crap to people. Like, what are you thinking? I think in that moment, also John Hill was like, tell me this isn't a story about kids. <laughs> and, and Andy was like, no, but hello, I am a father. I can talk about my kids if I want to. I don't think John ever wants to hear about his kids, really. But anyways, um, they apparently, uh, apparently this is a somewhat of a famous guy. So I'm racking my brain trying to figure out who it is. They said he's attractive, but the guy kind of came back at him and pretty much said, you know, that was, I don't forget what he said exactly, but you know, that was kind of hurtful that you told me that. And I'm like, oh my God, have you ever told someone something thinking you were doing it in a loving, kind hearted way? And they didn't take it that way. They like came back at you. I would just die. Oh, Kimmy says, was he talking about Jeff? No, because he tells John Hill that he's never met the person before, but he knows the person. He knows of the person. So definitely not Jeff, because we know that um, they have met for sure. Um, oh, my gosh. The commercial break. Y'all, if you don't watch the Jeff Lewis video, I wish it was live, but it's not. Uh, the Jeff Lewis video that goes up about seven or eight central time every night on the Sirius XM app. So I'm watching it. And Erin Leachy, who was on yesterday, you know, she's been on the show now three times. So I don't know if she forgot that they record these commercial breaks and pre-show and after show. But she and Jeff get into this conversation about her going to Mexico Thursday for her and for, for Abe's 40th birthday. And he says, is the cast going? She says, no, I want to have fun. And I'm like, oh, dig. And then Jeff starts talking about, don't you think the cast has changed? And he calls them all divas. And she said, I've never seen anything like it. Like their personalities have changed so quickly. They, she didn't say, oh, except for this, except for this. Ex she didn't say except for anyone. I was dying. because I was like, girl. I don't know. They keep saying that like, oh, everything's fine, whatever. But uh, -uh. I hear things. We all hear it. And I don't know. Now it kind of made me want to have another season two with all of them. I was kind of on the fence. I'm still not on board with this whole Jessel is queen thing. I don't care that she's in uh, whatever that magazine is. I, I don't care. Jessel is not the queen for me. So I'm not here for that. Uh, I don't know. Aaron is. Cy definitely needs to go in my opinion. Bye, bye, Cy. I kind of wonder, you know, she's the one that came in. Her job is an influencer. And I almost think her husband is a stay-at-home dad, is he? We know they met, I guess, because he was a manager or in bartending something. But does he, is he a stay-at-home dad? Like, does her income as an influencer, which I'm sorry, it's not like she's got 3 million followers. Maybe she has more. I'm sure she does now with, um, with Roni. But I don't know how many she had to begin with, but I'm sort of wondering what they're seeing, if that's giving her more work or less work, because I'm not loving what I'm seeing, like her screaming and shit. Ooh, I don't know. Um, tell me what you think for sure. Jamie Lee says, I love Jessel. Tell me more. What do you love about her exactly? Try to convince me. Try to convince me because I'm just not feeling it. Just not feeling it. Um, OK, let's get into my obsession. Beckham. It is on Netflix. It is four episodes. They're about an hour, hour 15 each. It's a documentary, which I love. Are you watching it? Did it change your mind about them? So I only watched it. I've heard of it, you know, about the past week. Andy Cohen mentioned it yesterday and said, you have to watch this. I think he's the one that said it will change your mind about Victoria Beckham. So I thought, okay, you know, I was kind of I'm 50 years old. Victoria Beckham is about 49 or 50 also. Uh, I think David Beckham is about 47. I just wasn't the biggest Spice Girls fan. Like, I think I was already a little bit too old for that. And just, I don't know, it just wasn't really my jam. Certainly soccer or football, as they call it over in England and pretty much the rest of the world, wasn't my thing. But I did play soccer in high school. Yes, I was a goalie. Can you believe it? Pretty much because, I mean, I'm only five foot seven, but that's a little bit tall. 
but they had the cute padded shirts and the little gloves. So I loved it. Had so much fun, but I hated playing soccer when it was like cold and rainy. And that's kind of the season here in Texas. It's in the spring and it's kind of cold and rainy. So I didn't like that part, but I loved my friends would like take my hair after school and like fish braid it, make like the fish braid ponytails and those are the memories I liked about soccer. I don't think we were very good. I was certainly no Beckham or anything like that. But anyways, love the documentary. It starts off and it shows him in a beekeeper uniform. How freaking hot is David Beckham in a beekeeper uniform with this beautiful golden liquid be uh, honey? It looks beautiful. So I'm on episode four. I'm almost at the very end of it. They haven't even talked about him as a beekeeper anymore. They haven't said how you buy it, how you, if they're selling it, anything else about it, but it starts off that way. And it's so cute. Um, I am learning a lot about them. He is really tidy. I mean, He's got this closet. He's got it all. Organized. I'm talking his little hangers were like one or two inches apart. Did y'all see this? Did that not turn you on like it turned me on? Y'all, would y'all be okay if I changed my account to David Beckham obsessed? Come on. Like, I'm here for it. Oh, my God. He's so cute. The man cooks dinner, lets the kids, four kids, well, I guess one's married now, and Victoria go to sleep. And then he stays up clipping the candle wicks and cleaning up the candles, cleaning the kitchen and the oven and the stove like to perfection. Oh my God. And he dresses immaculately. He is so cute, so hot. His hair is beautiful. I mean, I'm just smoking hot, Nick James says. I mean, I always thought Victoria was so hot and stylish and pretty. I think he's even prettier. Like, oh my God, I'm just dying. But knowing how much he's so dedicated to soccer, I also didn't know, obviously in the US, we say soccer, they say football. Also, we say field and they say pitch. I'd never heard of that. I never knew a, a soccer field was called a pitch. Sort of love it though. And then instead of calling the shoes cleats, they call them boots. I mean, I don't know. I think cleats is better actually. I don't know what pitch comes from. That has to be some reason. Uh, soccer, football, I don't know. I guess that's just a different whatever, but that's kind of cute. But he has been playing for Manchester, England. Is that what it's called? Since he was 15 years old. I think this is like when they take away like gymnasts, like Mary Lou Retton, uh, which, you know, stories have come out about all that. So that's kind of nasty. But they took him away, I think at like 12, 13 years old when they noticed him, what a like a soccer savant he was. And basically this manager guy pretty much raises him. He's like becomes this other dad. His mom and dad are in the documentary too. Victoria Beckham's in the interview or the documentary. Um, I'm just not, I don't know what Andy Cohen's talking about. She's not, the documentary is not making me love her anymore. As a matter of fact, she seems kind of bitchy. And like when the kids were little, at one point they have two little boys doesn't seem like the oldest one, Brooklyn, is even in kindergarten yet. And when they moved, when he moves from England over to Spain for this one soccer club, you know, she stays over there because she's like, I've got to get them in a school. I'm like, they're little. Like, seriously, they can move. It's not that big of a deal. Um, what else? Um, then the cheating rumors come up. OK, they didn't deny it. I, so I'm pretty sure he did cheat. He pretty much says, um, you know, some things need to be remain uh, private. The fact that neither one of them are denying this, though, tells me that it did happen. And she says basically when he got the opportunity to come to play for LA, uh, LA Galaxy, that, you know, they set up house and, you know, just made a new change and everything was better. The kids were in school, the house and everything. Um, and she says she finally kind of released all of that anger. But that just tells me that he did cheat, which I don't know. Is he the first athlete to ever cheat? No, but oh my God, if Victoria Beckham can be cheated on, oh my God, nobody is safe. Literally nobody is safe, right? Are you watching it? Are you going to watch it? It's four episodes. Like I said, they're about a little over an hour each. I started watching it yesterday. I was trying to finish it this morning. Y'all, I didn't even listen to the Jeff Lewis after show today. 
I started it and I realized I really want to finish this Beckham documentary. And I'm still about 20 minutes into it. You're sick of the Beckhams. Um, I don't think I'll watch or listen to a lot after this. Um, I'm sick of Jada Pinkett Smith. Like, bleh. Like, I'm seriously. Oh, Lady Grace says I missed a good after show. Okay, so y'all tell me. Let's talk about today's Jeff Lewis Live. Today was Nicole Ryan and her husband, Matt. I didn't expect her husband, Matt, but he's kind of funny. Like, kind of raunchy, for sure. Uh, everyone says the after show was really good. Okay, I was not expecting a good mesh. I listened to the beginning of it. I felt like Zach Noe Towers was a little low energy. So I was like, mm, I think I'll listen to this later. Oh my God, I'm so glad to hear that it was so good. I will definitely listen to it tonight when I get a chance. Um, I can't wait. I'm so glad it was really good though. And I'm so glad that there's five days a week of this live show, even though Jeff again on the show was making some jabs, basically saying that everyone in the New York office is like ignoring him. They don't want to talk to him. Even though he, they do talk about this ad week thing, they kind of him and Nicole Ryan definitely get some digs in there. So I don't know. Do y'all think this is doing better for Jeff and the renegotiations or worse? Y'all tell me. I'm, I'm just dying. Yeah, sick of Jada Pinkett Smith. Like, who cares? And all these details she keeps coming up about her and Tupac. Like, ew. Why are you bringing that up? Like, ew. Eh. Um, yes, for sure. Oh my God, I love that, Cindy. The after show was fire today of all days. Literally, the after show has been going on since mid-June. I've barely missed one of them. Even when I'm on vacation, I try not to miss them. And of all days, Beckham dragged me back for episode four. And I was listening to that for sure. Um, so Jamie Lee, okay. So this was kind of what my story was, my video was about yesterday is about um, a lot of y'all's comments had said, you think that Tim Johnson, Jim Thompson, whoever he is, is in on the joke about Jeff talking about Sirius XM. I, I, I'm almost leaning that way as more was said today because I would think, I mean, he did send, read a text and said like, you know, oh my God, you know, shut up or something like that. Stop it, whatever. Um, wait a minute. Y'all are really making me want to go to listen to the after show. Somebody else said how awesome it was. Who's your gal? Um, no, I haven't listened to Howard Stern in so long. Um, but I just lowered my Sirius XM. My husband and I were both paying for Howard, Howard Stern and both of us stopped listening to him months ago. Uh, so we just changed it. We were paying 59 a month or something for both of us to have Sirius XM in our cars. And it went down to like $15 after we dropped. And after I called, you know, I didn't even call. I did the uh, the little, the chat with somebody. So it was really good. Um, Dolly Girl said, you feel like you're hyping up the after show too much? I'm just shocked. I was not expecting Judge Lauren Lake to be, shout out Justin Martindale. I was not expecting Judge Lauren Lake to be such a good fit with Zach Noe Towers. So if y'all are telling me that he was, then I cannot wait to go and listen. Um, speaking of Justin Martindale, shout out. He was on uh, uh, with, uh, oh my God, my brain went blank. Good Lord. <laughs> Tell me who you're on with. I know who you're on with. Uh, shit. I mean, my brain literally just went blank. Uh, he was on. Who is on with Andy Cohen and his ex-boyfriend? Oh my God, I'm dying. Anyways, um, I get that vibe after watching the video of the show that they're on it, that they're in on it, Sirius XM. Yes, the news with John Hill. Thank you so much, <laughs> John Hill. <laughs> Thank you, Justin. Um, okay, so what did you think of Nicole Ryan? I, I have been drinking. No, I have not. I have been eating too many of those thin mint balls though. I am like, you know, when you eat too much of a good thing. So I had some last night, my son had put them in the fridge or the freezer. So good that way. And this morning I had a tiny little bowl and then I went back for a second bowl. Y'all not a good thing. Not a good thing. 
now I don't even want any more of them. Now the Oreo, the the mint chocolate cookie inside, it's it it has like this burnt taste to me. I don't even think it's real, but it tastes burnt to me now. Like it's so gross. Oh my gosh, I love that y'all listen to John Hill's show today. Um with Justin Martindale. Ooh, tell us if Justin Martindale will be on um the show again. Let's see if he can come on and tell us. Maybe he'll be on uh, Jeff Lewis Live again. I thought he was so good. Um, oh, thank you, Melanie. You're amazing. Okay, what else? So they talk about the dinner at the polo bar and drinks. And then Jeff talks about this big meeting he has today with Anheuser-Busch. He is meeting with them because they don't have any alcohol sponsors. Isn't that crazy? Like, his, But he talks about like... You know, they've got to talk about this healthy relationship with alcohol. I mean, fake it till you make it, right? I think for any amount of money, I think Jeff can tame the conversation about alcohol, definitely nix the conversations or the jokes about taking the back roads. But did y'all hear the story that Nicole's husband, Matt, told? Kind of about both of them. So they were on vacation and they had both been drinking too much, but it was only a mile from the house. They had a babysitter for the kids. Y'all, I babysat way too long ago to remember these stories, but I definitely think I remember some moms and dads, one or both coming home really drunk, and I just kind of didn't know it. Um, but my kids, my girls have babysat for other people, and they have definitely told me like, the husband or the wife will only come in and then the other ones come in later after they leave. And now I realize it's because one or both are so drunk. They don't want to be embarrassed in front of the little, you know, 17 year old babysitter. Right. Um, crazy. But he tells this story that she goes in to pay the babysitter and basically says, stay out in the car. For some reason, he makes the decision to drive the car. He said 11 miles of course, she put the nicks on that was like, no, 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 it wasn't that long. Right. He's like, uh, well, and then um, comes back. But like, thank goodness nobody was hurt. Right. Bad, bad choice. I, I don't know that that story should have been told on the air for sure. But it was kind of crazy. And then he admits he was taking edibles and alcohol. I mean, that's what stuff drugs and alcohol do. It makes you make bad decisions. Right. So as much as everyone, and they mentioned this on the commercial break, Aaron Leachy and Jeff mentioned it yesterday. They bring up Shannon, uh, Shannon uh, Bedore, and they talk about how horrific that is, that what she's going through. But I mean, everyone came at her as if a lot of people haven't made a similar bad choice, right? Whether it's driving under the alcohol, driving under the influence of drugs. Uh, driving really tired, uh, distracted driving with their phone. There's a lot of things that people do that's a horrible decision and can affect other people. I just, I, I think there was a way to support Shannon without degrading her and acting as if she's the only one in the world. Now, is it a horrific situation? Absolutely. Um, but I was really shocked that Nicole Ryan's husband brought that up and said that on air. Because in 2023, I mean, I guess in the 80s, the 90s, maybe people would tell that story, but not in 2023, right? I just think there's stories that you just can't. Even on Beckham, on the documentary, they show the late 90s, the early 2003, 2004, 2007, all of those times in Europe and England, they're showing the paparazzi and they even interviewed these two brothers who were paps. And they were like talking about um, showing or, or taking pictures of David Beckham's son, Brooklyn, when he was born. And that he was like, we didn't feel bad about it because we couldn't do that now. So now things have changed. And I do think that's what people can evolve to, right? They can they can make better decisions, basically, right? Um. Who are you talking about, Jax? If he keeps his business to himself, maybe things will go in a positive direction. Um, I don't know who you're talking about. Tell me. Um, okay, did y'all catch it? First of all, not that long ago, speaking of catching, somebody DMs me and says, I can't believe Shane unfollowed Chef Stew. 
And I'm like, what? And so I get these DMs somewhat often and I go check and they're wrong or they they just looked at it wrong. And I'm like, I don't think Chef Stu and Shane have ever unfollowed each other. I check. Neither one are following the other. So this could either be an unfollow or it could be that they blocked each other. So I don't know which it is. I felt like maybe there was something going on with Stu not being on the after show yesterday as planned. Jeff never admitted anything or said anything, but we did see a video of Stu that looked like his dog, him and Milo were at his apartment. So I don't know if he stays at Jeff's house when Jeff is out of town or not, but it definitely showed that he was at his apartment. And then um, Jeff talked about Stu like normal yesterday. Like he jabbed him. He joked about him. Uh, I don't think I heard anything about him today, but that's not, that doesn't mean anything's going on or they're on a pause. That just means he didn't say anything about him today. Right. Um, so I don't know. Oh, did they play T for D today? Somebody says, June Bug on TikTok says, every time they play T for D, they're on a break. I didn't even recognize that they played that. I heard the promo. What was the promo today? Um, I forgot which one it was. I love all the promos that they do, though. It was one of Jameson. Oh, something about Jeff. The, um, oh my God, it was something. <laughs> Literally, I have no brain. Okay. So he does talk. So last week, at the very end of last week, I think it was another commercial break or the after show, Kian is talking, I think, to Jeff. And Jeff says something about that's why he's going to get fired or that's why they're going to get fired. And I had no idea who was talking about one of his employees, someone at Sirius, a friend, didn't know what he was talking about. But he has been telling us these kind of weird stories about his newish house manager, Gus, right? Making these kind of strange comments that maybe are unwanted even by Shane, right? But today he mentions that his former house manager is coming back. Well, that's Nancy, y'all. Nancy and her wife or partner, whoever it was, retired or one of them. And I think they moved to the OC, which is over an hour away from Jeff's house. But he said that she's coming back to work for him. So I don't think it's that he would need two house managers. I'm assuming. Gus is on the outs. I don't know. Victoria says John Hill needs to plow Shane and get it over with. Oh my God. No. Y'all, John Hill is like, how old is John Hill? Okay, now I'm curious. Somebody look it up. 45, I'm going to guess. He looks younger, but Shane is 26. I just, I, I don't think, I also don't think Shane would ever put himself in an icky situation. And that could be icky considering that like John Hill comes on as a guest. He works for Sirius XM. Like, I don't think Shane is that much into the D that he would do that. I just don't think so. Oh, Melanie said they played T for D yesterday and today. Well, shit fire. There we go. Oh, my gosh. Melanie says, I think Stu has told Jeff to keep my name out your mouth if we are fussing about negative stuff. Oh my goodness. Wait, you're in Brazoria County, Kim? That's the county I live in. Why have I never met you? Why don't you come to our Houston area nights out with Jeff Lewis Chump, Chumpettes? Oh my goodness. Um. Anyways, where's all the likes? Oh, y'all like the video? Are y'all liking the video? Please like the video. Please tap the screen on TikTok. It, it helps other people find us in the, the Jeff Lewis community, right? Um, so he does talk about ad week. I guess he's got some big fancy dinner tonight that Shane can't even go to him with. I think Shane is nervous for him, right? Like he needs to keep Jeff in order, but Jeff is 53. Shane is 26. I don't think Jeff was aware, unless he's faking it, that he actually has to go to this dinner by himself. Like there's not, I think Jeff will pitch a fit and get him invited. Or he'll get somehow Nicole Ryan invited because he does seem genuinely upset that she's been at Sirius XM 18 years, but her show doesn't sell commercials. Like it's a morning radio show on Hits One. So they don't read, read commercials and stuff. So 
but Jeff seems genuinely upset that she can't make money this way, but I'm assuming she's paid in other ways since they can't do these commercials, right? Um, oh, he'll be 46 this month. Okay, John Hill will be. Oh my God, cut the cameras on TikTok says Shane and Stu are fighting over Jeff's love. I mean, I don't feel that's true. I'm getting hot now, y'all. It was 46, no, 49 or 46 degrees this morning when I got dressed and now I'm hot. Um, oh my gosh. Thank you, Melanie. I appreciate it. Y'all hit the, the, the thumbs up button on YouTube or hit the like button on all my videos. I'd really appreciate it. Um, and make a comment, even if you just tell us where you're from, tell us what you thought of the show. If you're live on the replay, whichever, all of that helps like the algorithm for Jeff Lewis Obsessed. So please do that on whichever platform you're watching it. And of course the podcast goes up about 10 minutes later. Um, I didn't have a ton of notes from the Jeff Lewis live show today. Y'all tell me something you want to talk about. I didn't, I don't know. Oh, all my, all my, uh, ah, all the comments is serious streaming Jeff and Andy's panel. Wait, did you hear that's what it was? Is that what it is? Is that their Friday thing that Katie tell me more? I have not heard. Um, thank you. Amish girl in California. Love you back. Um, miss y'all over the weekend too, but I think it's good to have a little break, right? This fan account, as much as I love it, it really is a lot of time and energy, especially with the 789 content. I mean, I guess if Chump Happy Hour goes away, that's an hour less a week that I'm listening to. Uh, anyways. Aw, y'all are sweet. Um, Kim Rhodes, I just recently found you, but I'm here to stay. Oh my God, my sister-in-law would love to join you guys one day. So if you're, make sure you join the Jeff Lewis Obsessed Facebook group. That's the easiest way for anyone uh, to meet other people in their city or if they want to go to a show. You can, just a good way to get to know each other better. But I know coming up, oh my God, is it next week? Oh. <gasps> In just over a week, a couple of us from the Houston area are going to see Zach Noe Towers show who's coming to Houston. So I think everyone that's coming except for one, I think I've only met Diane. I think everyone else is going to be brand new that I've met. So it'll be so fun. But it's a really good way to like meet other people. Um, shout out, Sal. Um, are you in your lunch break at school? Um, oh, hold me what the questions were. Um, what else? Yes. Christina says, I need to go see Zach Noe Towers in Houston. You, there's still tickets. I'm assuming we've got a six person table and that's like a VIP table or something after the fees and everything. It was only $31 each y'all. That's a steal. And it's at the improv, the Houston improv. So yeah. Oh my God. I can't wait. Sal says, Zach is so funny live. If you've never seen him before, I've never seen him. I've seen Fortune Feenster. I flew out to LA in January of this year and met some other, um, I, I think I knew all of them except for one. Uh, yeah, one I'd never met before. No, yeah, yeah. Anyways, and um, four of us rented a condo or whatever you call it, townhouse in the OC. And then we went and saw um, Fortune Feenster. So that was really good. Um, yes. Aw, I love that, Melanie. Thank you. Um, y'all have any questions? If not, we're going to wind it up early. I just didn't really, mm, it probably wasn't my favorite Jeff Lewis live. I mean, they talked, I mean, it wasn't like they didn't. Um, where am I from originally? Houston, Texas, born and raised. I even went to university of Houston. I have uh, since lost my mom and dad, but I have one brother. And I remember when I met my husband, he had already moved away from his family. And I pretty much said, look, if you're looking for a woman that's going to, you know, follow you around for your career, you, this is not her. Like I'm always staying near my family. And um, so I've always been in Houston area and now I'm in a city near it, but outside of Houston. Um, oh yeah. Tomball. Tomball is North about an hour from here, maybe just over an hour. Um, yes. Shane and Stu have, they've either unfollowed each other, Katie, or they've one has blocked. Cause if one blocks, I mean, think of, oh, I don't know. I hate that. I don't think I've ever noticed. I never look, but chumps send me stuff. Uh, Jeff Lewis Sluice, I mean, not the chumps. 
Jeff Lewis Slew send me stuff, the person, I don't even know why they checked. Like it, it never dawned on me because when Jeff kind of still mentioned Stu like normal yesterday and I thought, well, then nothing's going on, right? Uh, oh yeah, they definitely followed each other. Now that I do know that they did follow each other because Stu follows a lot of people. Matter of fact, um, Annie and I were putting together the reel yesterday and somebody had sent me some, some kind of website that had Tim Johnson on it, but we ended up using that. And then I looked him up on Instagram to get a picture of him because his Instagram is public and, um, or it's got a picture up anyways. And, uh, I used his picture, but somebody had looked it up. Uh, and even like Doug was following Tim Johnson, uh, chef Stu, and there was like a lot of other people. So, you know, uh, they, they follow a lot of people that are in the Jeff Lewis world, right? Um, if you're joining late, don't worry. The replay from the very beginning goes up immediately everywhere, but TikTok. Sorry, TikTok. Y'all are live, but it's available on the Facebook group. It's a uh, Facebook page, uh, Twitter, YouTube, uh, Instagram. What else? I feel like I'm missing one. Not threads. Um, and then as a podcast, so everything is under Jeff Lewis obsessed, but basically when I go to BravoCon, which is very soon, make sure you're following me on Instagram, because that's probably where I'm going to put most of my stories. It's going to be easier. Um, oh yes, we did. Kathy says, nobody talked about Tamara judge saying F you to Andy Cohen. Girl, I talked about that the very next day. I couldn't believe it. I did just see a story. Um, I think this is Daily Do Daily Dose of Donna. This is Daily. Uh, this is Donna Bowling shared it from maybe Bravo and Cocktails. I don't remember, but somebody said that um, Bravo is considering bringing Gretchen Rossi back full time. Uh, Vicky Gumbelson. She says I read somewhere that she will only come back if she's full time, not just a friend like she was last season. And um, Alexis Bellino. Which of those three would you want to see back? I would definitely want to see Gretchen Rossi. I'm curious what she does to earn her money. Does anyone know? Like, how are, are she and Slade earning money? Ugh, will we get Slade? I mean, he's funny to make fun of, right? Ugh. She is so gorgeous to me, y'all. I mean, I know she filters probably and wears a lot of makeup and her hair looks like she's from Texas. She might be from Texas, y'all. I don't know. She looks very like a Texas beauty to me. Um, but Slade just looks, oh, Slade looks like he needs to brush his teeth. Like, I don't know why. I know that's rude, but I'm just saying. Um, Gretchen is living off of Instagram posts. So like an influencer, I guess. I mean, I guess years ago, everybody said that, you know, Kim Kardashian made like a fortune off of Instagram, you know, ads and being an influencer, but I think a lot of that has changed. I just don't think you make as much money off of that stuff anymore. Uh, Chris Guth says, no Gretchen because of Slade. He's slime. I mean, ugh. what's their little girl's name? I forgot. She's so cute though. So, so cute. Oh, Gretchen went to Baylor. So of course she's a Texas girl. Is she from Texas? Maybe that's what I'm thinking. I feel like she's from Ohio or somewhere. I don't know. Um, I don't know. Oh, Slade and Ryan. Oh, Jen's husband, our boyfriend, Ryan. <laughs> Krista says, best line ever. Slade looks like he needs to brush his teeth. I mean, I'm just saying. Um, also, if you're going to BravoCon, if you want to meet up, I did hear on the uh, commercial break yesterday, uh, Jeff's chump. Uh, housewives party is going to be five to eight somewhere in Las Vegas. He didn't say where, but he was inviting Aaron Leachy and Aaron's like, I'm not even flying in until 11 PM at night on Thursday. Cause she doesn't have any requirements until um, Thursday or a uh, Friday, like four 30, she said. So she won't be there. So Jeff, I'm available. I can take Aaron Leachy's spot. Oh my God. When you just die, I would die. He would never, I mean, you can't do a Jeff Lewis fan account in the hopes that Jeff Lewis is ever going to do a favor for you because, you know, or follow you or repost you like he's just not that celebrity. So I definitely don't do it for that. But would I just die? Yeah, 
yeah. Like he knows me well enough. He knows I'm not going to like, if, if they didn't want me to take pictures or video, I definitely wouldn't. Or if they wanted me to ask permission, but my goals are I'm manifesting. So y'all do this with me. He hasn't talked yet about the live show Thursday that he's doing. I just want to be in the audience. Like wherever they do it, I just want to sit quietly and listen to them, watch them do the podcast. And then I think they're going to record, they're going to pre-record Fridays. So I'll be there. I'm available. So y'all put a bug in Jeff's ear, DM him, DM Shane. I think I want to say Doug is in on the planning for BravoCon. So DM any one of those and tell them that Sarah in Texas would love an invite. I would just die. I would just die. Um, cut the cameras. Have you and Jeff ever had a one-on-one -on -one conversation? I mean, not for long because everything I've ever, uh, I mean, I guess over DM, but I don't, I just don't bother him like that. I might ask him a question every once in a while, but uh, it's like a yes or no or what have you. Um, but when I've met him, uh, I mean, it's always in a public setting, like at a show or something. So there's no like, I don't take up 10 minutes of his time or anything like that. So anyways. Um, oh my God, Sunny Meadow. If he charges 10,000 for dinner, can you imagine those three New Jersey ladies? I wonder how much he would charge for a guest spot on his show. I don't think he would do it. There's no amount of money. I don't think it'd be worth it for him to have someone pay to come on his show. Like, I think so many people would tune out because they'd be like, why are we listening to, you know, some rich lady in Ohio that paid money? Because you know, he would tell. I think what I've heard them do is people have had like fundraisers for like charities. And remember that husband and wife, I think that bought the right to like sit in the studio. So I can see doing that and if Sirius XM allows it, especially for charity or a good, um, a good thing. Lisa says Sirius wouldn't allow it. They have in the past, but obviously rules can change at all times, right? Um, he has charity people. <laughs> um, anyways, if you're on TikTok, though, please tap the screen. That gives us a bunch of likes. Oh, y'all. We only have 162 likes. All you got to do is sit there and tap the screen. It's free, please. Um, it helps other Jeff Lewis fans find us. Um, wait, what's wrong, Melanie? Thanks everyone for verifying. It's just me. Wait, what happened? Oh, your ver video is blurry. Oh, that's weird. Um, my camera should be okay. Anyways, what are the questions? Victoria says, the way Jeff looks at his notes during shows, it seems he's under a lot of pressure to make it good. I always see him because I see him like scratching out stuff and writing stuff. I think, you know, I think that's one of the reasons Shane is so valuable to be with him at dinners and when they're driving. I think Shane takes notes in his phone. And then I think he does like a rundown and gives that to Jeff in the morning and then that's what Jeff is doing at the kitchen table whenever he's working. Um, like he's going through notes and stories, things they want to talk about. If something happens last minute, we know how spontaneous Jeff can be. Um, he's going to scratch something off and choose to talk about something else. So I think that's why. So I think that seems normal because I've always loved the videos and watching uh, that they show that, right? Oh, me too, Lady Grace. I can't wait to hear about this Blade helicopter story. I think they will. Shane talked about it yesterday, saying that he was looking into the schedule. It might have been on one of the commercial breaks. I can't remember um, for sure. Um, I wonder if Jeff would like someone talking about Monroe the way he talked about the receptionist, Sharon says. Can you even imagine? I mean, fast forward 10 years, y'all. If we are still listening to Jeff Lewis live on the radio or the TV or whatever he's on, whatever capacity, if he's somewhere talking about his personal life, can you imagine the hell he will put someone through if they're mean to Monroe at school, if a boyfriend breaks up with them, if a girl is mean to her, if there's a cat fight, someone asks her boyfriend or something to homecoming. I mean, in 10 years, she'll be almost 17 years old, y'all. I can't even imagine. Yeah. Shane is a great replacement for Jenny. He just, he does just as good a job as she did. I, I love Jenny though. I, 
think he misses the laughter. I think Jeff is more, they're both professional. I just think Jeff misses the laughter and the shenanigans when he was with Jenny. You know, he wasn't quite as famous, although he was famous. I don't know if he can go anywhere now because if they don't recognize him, they recognize Shane. So now it's like a double thing, but they recognize Jenny too, I'm sure. So I don't know. Who knows? Oh my goodness. Um, oh, thank you so much for coming on to TikTok to like the button, to, to like the video. Um, thank you so much for joining live. It is way more fun. If you're on the replay, please hit the like button. Please hit the subscribe or the thumbs up button on YouTube and make a comment. I would really appreciate it. Uh, the replay goes up immediately everywhere except for TikTok. And then about 10 minutes later, it's available as a podcast. If you listen to the podcast or if you don't, pop over there on Apple and get Jeff Lewis Obsessed and give me a five-star rating and review. I would really, really appreciate it. Make sure to follow me everywhere at Jeff Lewis Obsessed, especially Instagram, because that's where I'm going to more easily post all my content when I'm in BravoCon, because I'm going to be there Thursday morning, all day Friday, all day Saturday, all day Sunday. And I don't fly home until Monday afternoon. So it's going to be so much fun. Oh, I'm so glad you were able to join live. Thank you, Chris Guth. Um, anyways, see y'all tomorrow, 12 o'clock Pacific. Bye, y'all. Bye, Instagram. Hold on. It didn't let me hang up. Bye, TikTok. If I can hit the right button. Oh, my God. <laughs> like, literally. Okay, bye, y'all.